Welcome to all of you who are tuning in from around the world. My name is Malaika Vaz. I'm a National Geographic explorer and wildlife filmmaker. And today I'm here in my beautiful home beach in Goa, India. I'm going to be taking you on a journey around the world to 10 amazing initiatives covering our planet's major ecosystems. From little islands to vast grasslands, from the peaks of mountains to the bottom of the ocean. As an investigative journalist, I've traveled far and wide, but I have to say, these places are truly something else. The places I want to take you are all winners of a special award. They are the UN's first 10 World Restoration flagships. Each initiative is an example of the most ambitious, promising and inspirational ways of reviving lands and coast. It is important to note that this is not an award for individual governments, not an award for any one organization, but really this is an award for broad movements on the ground, some of them bringing together hundreds of organizations. Is your region part of the race to restoration? Stay with me and find out. To announce these 10 initiatives and celebrate their successes, I've got the support of an incredible group of people. Edward Norton, Ellie Golding, Lee Bing Bing, amongst others, as well as new music from Julian Marley in Bastille, and much, much more. The very first World Restoration flagship initiative we are going to explore is one that celebrates the incredible resilience of islands. And who is better equipped to talk about this than Aquaman himself? Jason Momoa, from my beach to yours. Aloha, my kako. As Aquaman and a native Hawaiian, I fell in love with the ocean, and I'm very connected to it. The health of our ocean and the coast are key to the survival of all species on this planet, and they are at dire risk from irresponsible human activity. I'm honored to celebrate a World Restoration flagship which makes significant efforts to conserve and restore their coastlines. The winner is Small Island Developing States for Ecosystem Restoration. The three big ocean states making ocean and coastal restoration a priority are collectively place more than 100,000 hectares under restoration. Congratulations on leading the way for ecosystem restoration. Mahalo nui loa. Aloha. Love you. Yukamba insia mali armazi suwa zine uyo ipara suifazai zambali armo vandi wai mbio layo na yanfiron mayo amwa mdeli baba taiwana damu wayo. Il y a l'augmentation de la population qui fait que maintenant la, la population est beaucoup, qui fait qu'il entre dans la forêt pour couper les arbres, ils vont à la mer, il faut des, des, des pêches interdites. Tout ça, ça a un impact dans l'environnement aussi. Les parents ont pu avoir des camions, 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 des camions. Il y a aussi l'érosion côtière à partir de l'élévation du niveau de la mer. Ana Tsirongola mba ndo handisa arma sensibilisation. Wandu wa jawao lazimu waone wa kula mra tame amba uenda mbio mwoni wabu harumwa uhifadhu inyamba bahari miyo. Gejao ije huze inti hee pandu ema tembezi. Ana kai inti para matembezi yali una jirma vya uju. Wabu kula mru ngetamu amba ima shahe nge afukao mwoni wabu. Our jobs are against them. We are going to be able to do it. Incredible! Don't you love the spirit of resilience coming from Camaro, St. Lucia and Vanuatu? And resilience, that's really one thing that restoration can do for us. But what else and why should we even begin to care? To explore this, I sat down earlier with two incredible global leaders, Inger Andersen, the UN Environment Programme's Executive Director, and Maria Elena Semedo, the UN Food and Agriculture Organization's Deputy Director General. 
when the United Nations reached out to governments across the world to find out the most incredibly inspiring solutions that are working to protect our natural world. They were not expecting 150 submissions from over 60 countries in different corners of our planet. When I looked through these incredible world restoration flagships, the 10 that made it, I was so, so inspired and I felt a sense of hope, honestly, because these are not just solutions that are small scale and working with communities, but they're ambitious and large scale. And they're also working with governments and different stakeholders at the very highest levels. Today, I am so excited to be in conversation with the United Nations Environment Programs Executive Director, Inger Anderson, and the Food and Agriculture Organization's Deputy Director General, Maria Elena Semedo, to dive into why these initiatives are so critical right now. Maria Elena and Inger, it is a pleasure to have you with us today. It's great to be here. Great pleasure to join my sister Inger and you, Malaika. I'd love to understand really how this project was conceptualized. What was the idea behind this? With our friends at FAO, we know that there are real issues around ecosystem degradation. When we think of the numbers about how much is degraded and how we are seeing 40% of the world's population living in places with land degradation to some degree, and we see 80% of the extremely poor living in rural areas. So we understand that nature is taking a hit. And the good news is that nature is so forgiving. You just give it half a chance and it'll bounce right back to life. So what we really want to do is to try to, in this decade, lift up restoration. And so this whole process is about, let's see what's already happening out there. Let's highlight those examples from across the world. And you mentioned all those that have come in. And let's then say, shine a spotlight on them because they're brilliant. They're examples for the rest of the world and really for what we need to do between now and the end of this decade. When you think about the fact that we have this triple planetary crisis of climate change, pollution and biodiversity loss, it almost feels like ecosystem restoration is the silver bullet. You could really reach out to people across the world and solve all of these problems by restoring habitats. I'd love to hear your perspectives on this, Maria Elena, and how you've seen this over the last couple of years. If we don't restore, we cannot have agriculture. We destroy the soils, we don't have water because we don't have ecosystem services. If you look at the 10 flagship, they have an amount of 28 million hectares. Maybe you can tell me it's far from the ambition of 1 billion, but it's a lot we have achieved. With this restored 28 million hectares, we can create 13 million green jobs and think how life is changing in those ecosystems. They will be able to have land where they can live, they can have a healthy life, they can have food, they can have benefits, and they can be more resilient to the climate change. I love that. One thing that I've noticed is that whenever you have ecosystems destroyed, you often have food productivity collapsing as well. I was recently in Bangladesh in one of the most climate change vulnerable zones. And we saw that as soon as the mangroves were gone and as soon as a lot of the forests in the area were destroyed, it had a huge, huge knockover effect on the food systems in the area. I'm curious to understand how you've seen this in your work and how the restoration flagships provide us with a source of hope that by protecting these landscapes, we can actually protect the rights of communities and their food security as well. People live on this good earth and it's our actions that have caused the degradation. But we have to eat and breathe and live and have water and opportunity and housing. How do we get that? Well, we get it from nature. But when we have eroded nature, whether it's climate change or whether it's over extraction or fragmentation or whatever we have done, where we have essentially eroded our soils and the nature's ability to sustain itself and therefore us, is obvious. Then we pulled the proverbial rug from under our feet. And we are not on a good trajectory. You see a mangrove gone in Bangladesh and you know what that means when the typhoon and the high storms come. But if you restore that mangrove, it will be that cushion effect when the storms come. You will see that where the mangroves grow, that's where you will have crayfish. That's where fish spawn. That's why these 10 flagships are so critical, because they shine a spotlight. Different communities doing different things. 
it's very, very exciting. So we're very pleased to see these now featured so that we can show the world that it's not lost. It's entirely within our grasp. We just need to do it. One thing that I've been thinking about a lot recently is how protecting nature actually makes business sense and not just ecological sense. I'd love to understand from you, Maria Elena, what is the economic rationale for ecosystem protection? And can we really think about this as something that isn't just great for big developed economies, but really for countries that are developing, that are early stage, um, and are really hoping to meet both ecological and economic goals? If we don't have a way that we protect nature, and we have the big decisions in the way we produce, the way we transform, and the way we consume, we will be destroying our nature, but our GDP, our economies will be completely destroyed. If you protect our environment, we can link nature, people, economic all together and have a triple benefit. This is what we need, coordination and cooperation. We have gotten wealthier, globally speaking, our labor capital and manufactured capital has gone up, but our natural capital has gone down. Nature has degraded. This is where we need to step in. I'd love to understand from your perspective, what gives you hope and how do these world restoration flagships contribute to that hope? The Secretary General speaks about an existential crisis on the precipice, code red for humanity. That's why it is so important to show solutions and to show people and communities who are leaning in with their hard work, with their imagination, their innovation, their creativity and their commitment. When we are seeing these world restoration flagships, it gives me hope. And that's a very important thing as we are living in this difficult time right now to showcase. What gives me hope is to see the young generation like you, conscious that we cannot live in the planet where we are living now. We are conscious that we need to take bold action and we need to move at scale. Countries are committed. They have already committed. We need to give them the platform to deliver what they have committed. You both give me hope with the incredible work that you and your teams are doing. Thank you so much for joining us today and for all of the amazing stuff that you do every day. Wow, so much to think about there. I don't know what you took away from this conversation, but I feel like I'm even more excited about the potential that mangroves represent in our fight to protect the planet. Talking of mangroves, over to our next correspondent, full-time river man and cleanup influencer, Gary Benchigib, who's knee deep amongst them right now. Hey world, for those of you who may not know me, my name is Gary and I like to get dirty here in the mangroves. We're here in South Bali, with Song I Watch cleaning mangroves and rivers. And right now, they're being obstructed by heavy pollution, sea level rise, and unsustainable aquaculture. So today, we wanna to celebrate an amazing initiative, Building with Nature in the Nija. Building with Nature in the Nija have found a way not only to repellent mangrove forests, but they've built a technology, a simple structure to really trap mud, to see successful survival rate go from 20% to 70%. Amazing congratulations to Building with Nature in the Niger for being named a World Restoration Flagship. Congratulations. Permasalahan erosi dan abrasi serta banjir pasang di Kabupaten Demak ini merupakan salah satu masalah yang sangat serius yang dialami di Kabupaten Demak. Merasakan satu abrasi yang luar biasa hingga desa-desa itu banyak yang tenggelam. Itu ada ratusan atau sampai ribuan hektar tanah yang hilang di Pantura Jawa, khususnya di Demak. Kami bersama-sama untuk menanam mangrove di pesisir. Karena kalau kena abrasi otomatis kita semua itu susah semua. What a great initiative, especially the idea of letting nature regenerate itself. That's really what can make all the difference. 
over now to singer, songwriter and ocean wildlife enthusiast Ellie Golding, who's in Egypt where the UN Climate Change Conference took place earlier this year. Ellie, tell us, is there still hope for ocean wildlife? So many species are losing the habitats they need to survive due to issues like climate change, pollution, coastal development and unsustainable fishing. And it's vital we do all we can to halt this decline. This year, one of my favourite weird and wonderful ocean creatures, the dugong, an animal that is surprisingly related to the elephant, went functionally extinct in parts of the world due to habitat loss. So I was delighted to hear about this particular project to restore and protect habitat for 3,000 dugongs and over 4,000 green turtles by 2030. It's in the country that's home to the world's second largest dugong population. The World Restoration Flagship's winner is the restoration of coastal and marine ecosystems of Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. Huge congratulations to everyone involved. We hope this restoration effort will help inspire others in this UN Decade on Restoration. In 2017, we lost around 65% corals. Almost similar in 2021. The seawater temperature exceeded 39 degrees. In recent years, we noticed a very sharp decline in the Emirates fish stock. One of our key indices was indicating that we were overexploiting our fish stocks and that they were being depleted. But uh, that doesn't tell the whole story. I think it's extremely important to understand how these corals are able to withstand these conditions and try to apply it to other places around the world. The various habitats here in Abu Dhabi, from mangroves to seagrass to corals, are all interconnected and uh, species flow within them. There's a lot of things that are understudied or actually undiscovered in the region. So I think there is a lot of work that needs to be done. I see corals here as like um, the front lines for climate change because conditions here might be seen in places in Australia within the century. That's some pretty incredible work that's happening with corals in Abu Dhabi. Now, coasts have always been places of inspiration, of sailing into new adventures, or in this case, surfing into them. Over to 2022, World Surf League champion Felipe Toledo, who's announcing the next World Restoration Flagship Initiative from the Atlantic coast of South America. Hello world, hello sports fans. I've been a surfer all my life. I started training with my father when I was only 10 months old. There are two things that surfing has taught me. First, love and respect for nature. And the second, the importance of adapting and taking the waves as they come. Humanity is now facing a gigantic wave, that of a triple planetary crisis. We're drowning in plastic pollutions, the climate is changing, and we're losing animal species at a dramatic rate. This is a wave we need to take head on. Today, I therefore want to honor an initiative that has done an amazing job in tackling of a trend of nature loss that has been going on for over 500 years. And the winner is Trinational Atlantic Forest Pact. The Atlantic Forest is an amazing ecosystem that runs along Brazil, Argentina, and Paraguay. In Brazil, we call it Mata Atlântica. It is home to an amazing number of three species and incredible animals like jaguars, golden lion, tamarind monkeys. Deforestation has been going on for over 500 years here. But in the last 30 years, an alliance started to reverse the trend. Now, 300 partners from three countries are fighting side by side to bring back the Atlantic Forest. Congratulations to Atlantic Forest Pact for being recognized as the World Restoration Flagship. Sem floresta, sem árvores, não tem água. É aqui que nós temos as nascentes, que elas precisam ser protegidas. Então, muitas estão secas. Quando ocorre alguma crise hídrica, já tivemos algumas onde a água diminuiu e muitos lugares chegou a faltar. Nós ficamos três anos com a maior crise hídrica da região sudeste do Brasil já registrada. 
são nesses momentos que as pessoas enxergam a importância da restauração ambiental. Me perguntaram, ah, o que, que você vai fazer no sítio? Você vai plantar, vai plantar feijão, café, vai ter gado? Aí eu falei, não, eu quero reflorestar. The Atlantic forest just amazes me. There is a saying I once heard in Latin America, without water, there is no life. And it just shows us how everything is so connected. Our forests, our water, our economy. On that note, give me a minute to hop over to another incredible place we have right here in Goa and explore some ecosystems on land. And while I travel over there, we've got something really special for you. A music video world premiere by reggae star Julian Marley for his fantastic and meaningful song, Don't Ruin My World. Julian, the dance floor is yours. Hi, this is Julian Jujimali, live from Jamaica. Reggae music is all about positivity. Reggae music is all about change for a better way. Right now, the earth is changing, fires burning all over the place, floods flooding out cities due to the lack of us taking care of Mother Earth. Let's do our part to bring forward a better change and longevity for mankind. Let's generate and restore. Let's stop burning and start restoring. Premiering tonight is my new video, Don't Ruin My World, check it out. Life's full of different seasons Every tree has a reason Everyone needs healing. I'll be right there for you. Bummy licking you will feed me. You give me air, keep me breathing, baby. I'll never leave you alone. Her warmth is like the sun shining, oh so bright. She keeps me rooted in her soil of life. I couldn't leave her even if I tried. She's branching.
Hello world, here I am again greeting you from a really special part of the forest deep in the Western Ghats. This is one of the most biodiverse regions of the world, with everything from the smallest of birds to the largest big cats calling this forest home. Stay with me to explore a range of beautiful ecosystems and winning initiatives that take care of life on land. Coming up, we have Edward Norton, Lee Bing Bing, and a wonderful, just terrific new song by the band Bastille. And a very special announcement from the band themselves. Stay tuned. Forests are wonderful. They're precious. And unfortunately today, they're threatened as well. Deforestation has a direct impact on both climate change and biodiversity loss, affecting hundreds of thousands of species, including us. One of the biggest threats to forests globally really is the expansion of agriculture. We have to feed the world, but often we're doing it at the expense of our environment and our soil. But maybe there are solutions out there that can make a tangible, real difference. Over to Massimo Batura, three Michelin star chef and food system advocate, to announce our next world restoration flagship. From the forest to the chef's table, over to you Massimo. Hi, I'm Massimo Bottura, UNIP Goodwill Ambassador and founder of Food for Soul. We all eat, we all can make a difference. I am Nanas, a world restoration flagship region fighting climate change through agriculture. Wow! And the winner is Central American Dry Corridor! In Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, Panama, People are innovating, inspiring, and creating jobs. Congrats, my friends. Together, we are the revolution. Ciao tutti. In our area, they call the corridor seco. Acá es donde poco llueve. El sol es caliente, ¿verdad? Nosotros sentimos que fuerte quema el sol. Nosotros mismos hemos desequilibrado la ecología. Bastante hoy en día, o sea, el clima varía. Muchas personas a mí me dijeron, mire, yo no voy a cultivar, no tiene cuenta sembrar. Unless we understand that, this will be getting worse and worse. Nuestros ancestros cultivaban de una forma más natural. Esas prácticas antiguas que venían como cultura de la familia, quizás nadie creía que podíamos llegar a mejorar. I am really enjoying these little glimpses of restoration work on the ground. If you are too, then I have some great news for you. We have made short documentaries about each of these initiatives that will stream as a series for free on UNAP's YouTube channel starting next year. Do not miss any updates. Go to decadeonrestoration.org and sign up to the newsletter. Now, on our journey around the world, we turn to an incredibly important continent in the race to restoration. Countries have already promised to restore 1 billion hectares. But did you know that over half of these commitments come from one continent that is emerging as a leader in this space, Africa? Over to hip-hop artist and activist Frida Amani to announce the next initiative to win the title of World Restoration Flagship. Hello everyone, my name is Frida Armani, a rapper and media personality from Tanzania. I am always happy to be standing in front of you to tell you about the great things about Africa. And now ladies and gentlemen, in front of you, I'm about to announce the winner of the movement about regreening the planet. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner is the great green world! Yes, stretching all the way across Africa, the Great Green Wall has been a great push into identifying the solution for the restoration of Africa. In Burkina Faso, the plan is to get more than 2 million hectares restored. Ladies and gentlemen, together, I believe we can do this. I believe in Africa, I believe in us. So now is the time to regreen our future. Let's restore our planet. You know very well that Une zone où le climat est trop changé. Euh, dans le temps passé, les terres là sont vraiment suffisantes. Mais à l'heure actuelle, là, ça ne répond plus parce qu'il y a eu la dégradation qui a engendré la désertification. De plus en plus, les conflits augmentent. 
Tout ça, ce sont des conflits que la dégradation et la désertification fait instaurer. Vraiment trouver des moyens pour faire en sorte que les populations vivent mieux dans un écosystème qui est très hostile, qu'on connaît déjà, qui est l'écosystème du Sahel. Nos projets pour l'avenir, nous voulons assez que notre groupement là, nos activités soient propagées dans l'international, pas même dans le, dans le national, jusqu'à l'extérieur. We've seen that nature does so much for us, including supporting agriculture, securing clean water and providing jobs. But every great relationship is reciprocal. And I wonder, what do we do for nature and our ecosystems? Honestly, not enough. According to a new UN report, we urgently need to double finance for nature by 2025 and triple it by 2030. Without action at this scale, meeting our climate goals will remain a distant, distant reality. So how should we go about this? I am honored to have one of the world's leading thinkers, economist and UN champion of the earth 2022, Sir Partha Das Gupta with us. He's speaking with UNEP Executive Director Inga Anderson to explore the role of our economic systems in the race to restoration. Sir Pata Desgupta, what a pleasure it is to speak with you today. It is my great honor and pleasure to present you, virtually albeit, with the award, the 2022 Award Champions of the Earth for Science and Innovation category. It is in UNEP and in the United Nations the highest environmental honor. Well, first of all, Inger, the honor is all mine. And uh, I was overwhelmed with the kindness, generosity, expressed in the appreciation of my work. You have dived into the economics of nature, the economics of biodiversity, inclusive wealth. And what I really want to talk with you about is how does that concept help us to restore the planet and to restore nature? What is really important is that we have a grammar, a common grammar of understanding what economic life, or more generally, what life is all about. We are embedded in nature, and yet our economic thinking, whether it is a private company, whether it is the public decision maker, you miss that fact. It is important that nature should be introduced in economic language as an essential asset, like buildings, roads, machines, education. We don't include the wetlands, the forests, which play an essential role in keeping us alive. I think the fact that you have offered up and to the world this vocabulary, the asset class of nature, thinking of it as something that, that we need to maintain and, and, and have stewardship in support of, is actually critical because it gives a different credence. So what is it then, you would say, Sapata, that makes us up until this time not accounting for nature? Why have we just sort of been abusing it in this manner? We evaluate the performance of an economy in terms of gross domestic product, the final goods that the economy produces. But the rogue word in gross domestic product is gross. It does not take into account the depreciation of capital assets that are accompanied by the activities that we undertake. So, for example, if gross domestic product goes up even while trashing wetlands or the coastal regions, that won't be recorded. So you could have nature going down in the sense of being less and less productive from our point of view because you have trashed it, got barren slopes and barren fields, even while GDP is going up. Now, the thing is that that can't happen forever. We're depleting nature, like excessive fishing in a fishery. You can do it for a while, but eventually you run out of fish. The rich countries have essentially outsourced their need for nature. 
the British economy is not going to collapse if more of its biodiversity is depleted. So the real pressure will come from the poorer countries, the ones in the tropics which house the greatest amount of biodiversity, because in some sense, in order for them to grow, which they're being encouraged to do, obviously, because they're very poor, but every time they export, these are primary products they're exporting now, remember, they're actually depleting their biodiversity even more. Weighing this, we want to preserve and conserve our biodiversity, but we need to exploit our natural resources for poverty reduction. And yet I am seeing some glimmers of hope, right? Sort of this, okay, yes, but with climate, we actually have to invest more in nature and that will give us a degree of security. What uh, sort of the economic tools and instruments that we have at our disposal for yielding that revenue stream? In large part, it has to be international uh, aid. But there is another subtle issue where private companies uh, will have to take a lead. Damages to the ecosystems in the source country create additional risk to the profitability of the importing country. I think that connection could be exploited better. The incentive for the importing companies is powerful that they need to protect the ecosystems on the basis of which their uh, supply chains rest and their profits rest. Mm -hmm. The trouble is each of the importing companies will not have the incentive to do that because of the correlation in risks. Therefore, they need to act in concert. They need to act in concert for their own good. So one thing that I would like to hear from you as you have been path breaking in um, helping us understand the economics of biodiversity, but yet seeing degradation uh, happening, what gives you reason for hope? The small change I've observed is the increasing commitment of the young in protecting nature, the protests that they take part in. But I like to think it's not so much the protest which will work, it'll be nagging their parents and grandparents who are in seat of power at dinner time. What are you doing to my future kind of question that might have some impact. It's a great pleasure to have this conversation and to award you the 2022 Champions of the Earth for Science and Innovation. We are deeply honored that you accepted and we look forward to seeing future works. We, what you've done has been path-breaking. Our deep thanks. Welcome back. I feel like I took away so much insight from that conversation. Stay with us as we learn about four more incredible winning World Restoration flagships, as well as a really special announcement and brand new song by Bastille for Generation Restoration. You do not want to miss this. So we have heard from oceans, forests, mangroves and more, but it is important to remember that not all sustainable ecosystems need to be green or blue. Over to an award-winning actor and UN Goodwill Ambassador, who also happens to be a grasslands and savanna enthusiast, Edward Norton. Hey, this is Edward Norton. Happy to be with everybody. A lot of you probably know me as an actor, and some of you might know that I have an equal passion for environmental conservation. We're working on a story where the outcome is still uncertain, but we have to remember, we still have our hand on the pen, and the World Restoration Flagship Programs is a great example of the chapters that we need to write to create a happy ending. So I'm excited to announce that the next winner of the World Restoration Flagship is the Altin Dala Conservation Initiative from Kazakhstan. The Altin Dala project deserves to be underlined and celebrated for protecting over 95% of the rare antelope species called the Saiga antelope. These grasslands represent more than just a habitat for antelope. They represent a carbon sink because we increasingly understand that it's not just forests, but healthy grasslands and soil that sequester an enormous amount of the world's carbon and prevent the desertification that impacts people and populations in so many negative ways. So congratulations to the Altendala project. You really inspire us with the size and scale and boldness of this effort. Мы наблюдали в 2015 году, когда в Центральном Казахстане погибло более 200 тысяч сайгаков, и мы потеряли больше 90% этой популяции. 
if for a long time we don't have enough uh, grazing pressure, then fires will become more frequent and eventually they will change vegetation communities. We are lost this balance of the healthy ecosystem. More and more area is covered by step fires. And of course, it's effect directly to the people. I'm proud that I have a chance to help to restore this landscape for future generations. We have shined a spotlight on many individual ecosystems now, but how do they interact with each other? Over to world-famous actress and tireless environmental activist Li Bingbing to announce the next initiative to win the title of World Restoration Flagship. Hello world, I am Li Bingbing, serving UNEP as a goodwill ambassador. In the past two decades, I've focused on climate change and environmental protection, committed to wildlife conservation by leading a campaign to end ivory consumption. I continuously put efforts into calling for actions towards harmonious coexistence between humans and nature, because I believe that nature, wildlife, and humans are connected. Humanity and nature make up a community of life with a shared future. That is why I am so proud and honored to announce a World Restoration flagship today that is all about connections. And the winner is the Shenshui Initiative in China. It is a large-scale comprehensive ecosystem restoration initiative to revitalize our mountains, rivers, forests, farmland, lakes, grassland, and deserts as a community of life. What happens in our mountains affects the valleys below, and what happens on farms affects the quality of our water. The Shenshui Initiative is connecting all ecosystems and aims to restore 10 million hectares landscapes by 2030. Congratulations! These years, the economy is very fast, but it has also paid some price. 我们现在的挑战哈，最主要的就是气候变化、生物多样性的丧失、土地的退化。就当时我们开发的时候都是杂草嘛，看着其实心挺难受的，你知道吧？中国的乡村里面有很多空心村，只有老人，只有呃孩子，但是没有青年人。刚开始我把这个想法跟中国的农民沟通的时候，他感觉到瞪着眼睛大啊。人与山水连天湖是和生命共同体。要依据这种人与自然和谐共生的我们祖先的这样的一个智慧，来整体的提高我们的整个的生态系统的这样的向好。A community of life, what a powerful way to think about ecosystems. And it is true, what happens up high influences life below. To announce the next World Restoration flagship, we have extreme mountaineer and Netflix star Nimstai Purja. Nimstai climbed 14 mountains over 8,000 meters in a record time of six months and six days. Over to Nimstai in Nepal, where the air is a little thinner than over here at sea level. Hello everyone, it's Nimstai Perza from beautiful Amadabun Beskam. The big mountains are facing huge problems from extreme pollution, extreme biodiversity loss and extreme climate change. Today I want to honor four mountain regions from four countries that have teamed up and achieved amazing results. And the winner is the multi-country flagship on ecosystem restoration in the mountain regions from Serbia, Kyrgyz, Uganda and Rwanda. Despite challenges like climate change, all these projects succeed in protecting what was left and bringing back what was lost. Well then guys, by working together, you know what? We can make even bigger difference. Thank you so much. Меняется в целом микроклимат. Последствия там ничего не будет произрастать. One of the key challenges that is being experienced is that of human-wildlife conflict. Wildlife and people are needing to use the same resources. Анан биз ошон негизинде анан бул жерде көп тагы сактап кала турган кечемес экенин билдик да. Анан ошон негизинен биз ошол запеенитти уюштурууга демилге кылдык да. Жердин кыртышы чөп такыр болуп. Жоғалып кетпес үшін ұшыл долборуды 
o katışıp geliriz. Now it's my turn to announce a flagship that is very close to my heart. At the end of the day, restoration is all about people. About people finding a way to make peace with nature and flourish. And that's exactly what this next initiative is all about. Restoring people's connection to a river so that both can flourish. The tenth and final initiative to win the title of World Restoration Flagship is Namami Gange in India. Namami Gange translates to bow to the Ganga and I love how this is a celebration of India's deep spiritual reverence for rivers and our passion to find ways to keep them alive. The goal of restoring the Ganga is not only restoring nature but restoring the connection between community and the river. In some places water quality has reached its highest level in years helping turtles, otters and even dolphins return. Congratulations and thank you to the Namami Gange mission. Ganga is a very important river for the country. The biggest environmental pressure is of course the pollution. Due to increasing threats, human dependency upon riverine ecosystem, many of the species are in endangered category. खेती बाड़ी की जो पद्धति है उसको बदलना चाहिए बदलने की जरूरत है टर्निंग पॉइंट इन दिस्ट्री ऑफ गंगा जीवनेशन एंड ट्रीटमेंट People never thought that Ganga water can ever be clean. It will be a major path breaking event in the history of India. Ten great initiatives, ten reasons for hope. Next we have a special message from a personal hero of mine someone who has inspired generations with her pioneering work Dr Jane Goodall what gives you hope Hello this is Jane Goodall and I've got a message for everyone who cares about our future We're living in very dark times politically socially and of course environmentally Climate change is affecting all parts of the globe and accelerating the shocking destruction of habitats and loss of biodiversity. I'm always being asked if I truly have hope, and the answer is yes. I do think we have a window of time to slow down climate change, loss of biodiversity, but that window is closing. We must take action now. One of my reasons for hope is our amazing intellect our incredible ingenuity when we set our minds to solving problems when our backs are to the wall another of my reasons for hope is the passion and commitment of young people once they understand the problems and are empowered to take action and i know this to be true because of the jane goodall institute's program for young people of all ages who are working to make this a better world for all The program is now in over 60 countries. It's you and your projects that truly give us hope for a brighter future. Chimpanzees when they're excited and I'm excited right now. But it's accompanied by putting your arms around and patting one another and I can't do that for you much as I would like to. Goodbye and good luck. Thank you so so much for spending this gala of hope with me. And remember, our work as generation restoration is not finished. It has only just begun, and we're going to need every single one of us involved if we are to win this battle. Over to Bastille with hope for the future. Show us how it's done. Hello, we're Bastille. I hope you're doing well. 
We've recently released a new song called Hope for the Future, which we wrote in response to an incredible documentary called From Devil's Breath, which deals with the devastating fallout um, of, of forest fires due to climate change in a Portuguese town a few years ago. We found the film incredibly moving and incredibly inspiring, and we hope that you find some inspiration in the film and the song. Um, we'd like to dedicate this song to uh, generation restoration, and we will be donating all income from the streaming of the video to ecosystem restoration on the ground. Anyway, keep up the work wherever you are, and hopefully see you soon. Picture of you here in my head. Ooh. 